Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. We're happy to be able to bring you the first ever arts and culture accessibility cooperative webinar entitled Open Access, Connecting with Isolated Communities. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes, but I just wanted to go through a few technical things first. If you dialed in through your computer, you're automatically connected through your computer audio. If you would rather call in, you can do so. The phone number is on your screen there. It's 1-312-626-6799. The access code is 923-106-725. If at any point during the meeting, you would like to switch from your computer to your phone and you didn't write that info down, that's fine. Just go ahead and ask us in the chat and we'll get it over to you. Please remember that if you are currently on your phone or are you are switching to your phone, make sure to mute your phone. A recording of this webinar will be emailed to you so you don't have to worry about taking notes or writing down what's on the screen. Your microphones are all currently muted. At the bottom of your screens is a toolbar where you'll find the Q&A button. Please submit questions throughout the presentations here. After all the presentations, we will answer as many questions as we can from this section. At that time, you may also use the raise your hand button also on the bottom toolbar, at which point we can uh, unmute you individually so you can ask your question without having to type. At the conclusion of the webinar, you will have an opportunity to fill out a survey. It'll only take about three minutes and your feedback is really important to us. So please take a couple minutes to let us know what you think. I can also email that survey directly to you. And finally, if you aren't already a member of the ACAC Facebook group, please join us. You can scan the QR code at the upper left of the screen with your phone's camera. You can also search Facebook for Arts and Culture Accessibility Cooperative, or you can go directly to facebook.com slash groups slash ACACSTL. And again, we're really glad you could join us for this virtual arts and culture accessibility cooperative forum, open access connecting with isolated communities. We hope you are all safe and you are all self isolating. As many of you know, this is our first ever virtual ACAC. So we're doing our best to ensure it's accessible. We have presenters today from three great St. Louis cultural institutions, the St. Louis Zoo, Shakespeare Festival St. Louis, and one of the city's newest attractions, the St. Louis Aquarium at Union Station. My name is Megan Harms, and I'm the Arts and Culture Coordinator for Mind's Eye. I'm the person that sends you all those emails about these events. I want to quickly touch on an important topic that is extremely relevant right now, particularly with isolated communities, and that is the census. As you all should probably know by now, the 2020 census is here. The most important question is who is count counted? And the simple answer is everyone. Everyone gets counted. The cens census counts all persons who live in the United States on April 1st, 2020, regardless of citizenship or immigration status. The citizenship question is not on the 2020 census and people are counted in their quote, usual place of residence. So that means the places where they live and sleep most of the time. One important question this year is about college students who normally would be living away from home at their college residences. If you or your child would have normally been in a dorm on April 1st, but was sent home, do not count that person in your household. The Census Bureau works with the colleges and universities to get an accurate on-campus count. If you normally live off campus, use that address, which may or may not be where you were actually sleeping on April 1st. Also, do not count anyone who was incarcerated, staying in a prison or jail facility, anyone in a nursing home, a residential treatment center, or any group care setting, setting like a college dorm. Those are all counted separately as institutions. 
Missourians rely on federal dollars, as do those of us that live over in Illinois. We all rely on those federal dollars. The federal program obligations add up to $16.5 billion for the 55 largest federal programs. Each state's share of these programs is determined by census data. There are hundreds of federal spending programs where funding is determined by census data. And undercount impacts all of us. Undercounts will impact how communities access education, financial services, housing, and the health care they deserve. When services fall short, it puts increased pressure on the nonprofit sector and their donors to fill the gaps. And I know a lot of us in this webinar are with nonprofits. So this is important to get this out there. So here's the breakdown of the federal programs that receive funding. $6.5 billion in Medicaid, $1.2 billion in SNAP, $967 million for highway planning and construction, Section 8 housing, which is a voucher program to assist low-income families, the elderly, and individuals who are disabled to afford decent, safe, and sanitary, ho sanitary housing in the private market. That's $240 million. $210 million for national school lunch programs, $173 million for CHIP, and there are also programs like Head Start, Health Centers Funding, Special Education Grants, WIC, and much more. Here is a map of Missouri with the traditionally undercounted populations. Note that this also includes parts of St. Louis City and County. Undercounted populations include low income, rural communities, multifamily housing, communities of color, limited English proficiency, children under the age of five, homeless, older adults, and people with disabilities. Approximately 9% of Missouri's population lived in undercounted neighborhoods during the 2010 census. These are census tracts where almost a quarter or more households did not mail back their census questionnaire in 2010. Without concerted efforts, these households are at a higher risk of being missed in the 2020 census. And think about this, in 2016, which is not that long ago, 2016, 20.7% of households had either no internet subscriptions or dial-up only access, according to American Community Survey data, 2016. Also, children are actually the hardest to count population with about 4.5 million children living in traditionally undercounted communities. That can mean poverty, complex, complex living arrangements, language barriers, and several programs directly benefit children like CHIP, Head Start, Foster Care, Child Care, Special Education. In 2010, an estimated 1 million children under the age of five did not show up in the survey. There are three easy ways to fill out your census, online, by phone, and by mail. The easiest way, which is new this year, is the, to visit the website, which is www.2020census.gov. You can also call, and the number is 844-330-2020, and you can fill it out right over the phone. The website offers language translation of a guide in 59 different languages, including uh, also a glossary of terms in those languages. I've included links here for the Bosnian guide as well as a video of the ASL guide and audio for the large print guide. These links will also be emailed to you. If you would like a braille guide, please email me directly. And my email again is mharms, H-A-R-M-S, at mindseyeradio.org. If you need a braille guide, email me directly and I'll try to get one out to you. Please, if you haven't already, please remember to fill out your census form. So now we have a poll. So I'm gonna activate this poll about the census and it should pop up on your screen.